The judicial panel of inquiry set up by the Lagos State Government to investigate the October 2020 Lekki shooting incident has approved the reopening of the Lekki toll gate. Now, this has led to many Nigerians taking to Twitter to protest that those who carried out the alleged shooting of innocent citizens must face the law before the toll gate can be reopened. Um, the Occupy Lekki toll gate hashtag, which is another wave of protest against the injustice and government silence over the Lekki shootings, is scheduled to kick off on the 13th of February 2021, according to Twitter sources. And joining us today to have these conversations, legal practitioner Bernard Oniga, economist Bolahan Olojede, and social political activist Aisha Yesufu. Thank you, lady and gentlemen, for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having Thank us. All right. I'm going to start with Bernard here because he was uh, at that sitting and that hearing. So, Bernard, let me start with you. What we saw, everybody watched that video where there was an altercation before the judge finally uh, made her ruling saying that the, the um, LCC had a right to open uh, the Lekki toll gate. Does this mean that the um, hearings have been come, brought to a conclusion? Is that the end of it or is this a means to an end of sorts? Explain to us. Well, um, um, I have been part of that sitting vis-a-vis um, -vis my role as the team leader of the Nigerian Bar Association Observation and Pro Bono Committee. And so um, the counsel for LCC, Mr. Seriki, mm -hmm. has on several occasions made an application before the panel to grant LCC leave to um, have their insurance company um, carry out an assessment on the tool to determine the extent of damage and commence repairs on the tool. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Milord, the chairman of the panel, Justice Oka, who retired, had um, time and time again said that um, she, the panel felt it was not um, the, the right time. Um, however, as it were, um, on Saturday, um, the panel, um, of course, there was a split decision we saw five members of the panel, including Milord, coming, coming out at first to give their ruling. And then you see my learned senior, Mr. Ibunade Borua, SAN, giving a dissenting ruling. Um, 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 other um, representatives of civil society and young persons at the panel also had dissenting views. Um, that is exactly what it is today. But however, um, it is that five members are in support, as it were, in quote on the reopening of the toll gate. And my Lord has given that truth in that the toll gate um, be reopened. I do not know and I cannot say. Um, the only thing I know is that as at Friday sitting, uh, we were notified that the panel was viewing, members of the panel were viewing the forensic reports of the forensic experts that were I probably, and I, like, like Milo said, hired by the Lagos State government yes. to look into the tool. You see, but, so but the forensics, a, as we know from the reports that we got, those forensic evidences were supposed to be presented on that same Friday, but it wasn't mentioned uh, during the sitting. Ve very well. Um, I had at a sitting also um, notified the panel. Um, I think uh, my learned senior, Mr. Gunlana, was there on that day. And we both notified the panel if it was okay for independent parties to also get their forensic auditors to take a look at the video evidence and, uh, uh, before the panel. And the panel did give a, give a, give a nod um, in that regard. I'm not aware of any independent party ex aside the Lagos State government that has employed or rather um, 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 engaged the services of a forensic auditor as it were. <laughs> uh, I must draw your attention to something very important because we must say these things as they are. Our nation is at stake. Um, other members of the panel are saying, and I think um, um, Renu, Renu Dwala and even Ebunade Burua SAN, are saying that the LCC did not give necessary cooperation to the forensic experts to enable them carry out their duty diligently. That is a matter of urgent public importance. Mm -hmm. I would say that if these insinuations were through, then the forensic auditors ought and its forensic report ought to be made public. Mm -hmm. Independent parties such as the NBA and other activists would be allowed to scrutinize that report, examine the report, cross-examine the auditors too. Let's be sure of the, the kind of auditing that occurred. Mm -hmm. Because he who pays the piper, he takes the tune. And in this case, you know, the legal state government is... is of is, course, it's is, questionable. Is, yeah, very it's a well. question mark. But let me come to Aisha Yesufu. Um, 
Of course, every, there's an outcry, there's a public outcry. The moment we heard that the Lucky Toll Gate was going to be reopened, celebrities, activists, everybody said, oh, this is foul play. Justice is not going to be served. Uh, I, I mean, the list is endless. Where do you stand on this? I'm sure that you've been following all of these proceedings from where you are. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I've been following the uh, proceedings, not as much uh, uh, as uh, I should I should be, uh, how do I put it now? Not as much as, as I would have loved to, but enough to be able to make a, a, an informed uh, opinion uh, on this whole, whole issue. I think one of the things that we, we must realize is the fact that the LCC itself has been accused of being complicit in the attack that happened on the 20th of October, 2020. And we must never... Uh, forget forget that the part that they played. We saw uh, before the attacks on that 20th uh, of October 2020, uh, some uh, uh, workers of uh, LCC had come to take away our uh, cameras, even though now sometimes there are different opinions, you know, whatever cameras they are, but they did come to take away our uh, cameras on that day. And for those of us who have been uh, uh, sort of like on the street and know what uh, have been in some occupied, you know that one of the things that is normally done when any heinous crime is going to be committed is that cameras are taken away. So for L LCC to come and do that, it meant that they were part and parcel of whatever the plot, the, the, uh, they were complicit of what happened on that day. And for it now to be, uh, for them to be asked uh, to go and reopen the uh, Lake Togin, and then you know it's it's a slap on the faces of every Nigerian. It's a it, it's a slap on those who have lost their loved ones, whom up till now the government has not even taken responsibility uh, for killing their their young young ones. This is not the way it should go. And let nobody tell me or anyone that oh it is business revenues are being lost. We have businesses that have been closed down. If when cases are in court for years until there is a judgment, there is a rule these businesses remain closed, irrespective of whether you have businesses to run, whether you're making losses or not. So why is the case of LCC different? Why is the case of the Lagos State government different? And I mean, there's so much more. And they, like, as we rightly said, they haven't cooperated. They haven't been on the side of the people. I mean, this is injustice at its highest. And it's a slap on the families of, of, of the victims, indeed, telling them that, you know, they can't get justice. Whatever is being done, that is just a sham that it's out there. And it's, it's not acceptable, actually. Well, um, you obviously are very good with the numbers here, and that's why you're on the show this evening. Uh, there are people who have, I've seen so many arguments on social media, I've been in you know, rooms where these same conversations have been had, and there are lots of people who are saying, look, this is the heart of business in Lagos. It's a big business, it's, it's giving jobs to people, and that's why the go-ahead or the nod has been given for the toll to be reopened. Run us through the economic aspect of this whole reopening. Um, well, there, there is no doubt that this has a huge economic implications. Considering the volume of traffic, the toll, the employment that are affected, so there are definitely economic uh, implications for what is going on. And um, in, in, in my opinion, the approach should have been for the party. So you have, uh, rather than have two factions, uh, of, of, of the uh, committee on, one, on, on, on two different sides. Then you also have LCC on the other side. You have uh, the NSAR people on another side. Is it actually impossible for people to sit down and agree exactly on what is required to be done so that the, the, the place can be opened up? So um, if LCC is meant to provide certain information, like uh, the lawyer said, that relates to the forensic audit, and they have not provided it, then they need to provide it. So whatever is required on the part of the party's concern to, uh, to be done, should be done. And once it is done, um, let's, let's, let's be able to open to business, because there might be other changes. There might be a bank loan that is somewhere there, you know. But Bola, I, I, I want to take you up. I want to take you up on that. This thing deep and resolve the integrity that we will, rather than resolve resolve problem, we will hurt more parties. And the cost of it. Like Aisha Yesufu said, 
there have been businesses that have been shut down for years. We're talking years. Just because of issues, maybe sometimes bloodshed might not even be involved, but because these issues are being dealt with either in a court, I know that this is not a court per se, but why would we be, is, it, is the government telling us or is the LCC telling Nigerians that that business of the toll is much more valuable than the lives that were lost or the fact that lives were even threatened in the first place? The, the econ economy alone, the economic situation, cannot be a sole justification for opening it. It is a justification. It is part of it. It should be considered. But because there are other issues that are attached to this matter, we must resolve all those issues all together before we can say open it. So as far as I'm concerned, the economy alone cannot justify uh, the action that has been taken. So we must resolve what the issues are. What more do we need to do at that gate um, to be able to open it? Are the forensic uh, uh, auditor's uh, questions, has it been answered? Whatever samples we needed to collect, are the, are this, have we collected it? If we have done all of that as is required, then there's nothing that should stop the gate from being open. As a matter of fact, some some people, I mean, the last, the, all, all the time I passed through the place, I was delighted that there was no traffic. I was delighted I did not have to pay money. Everybody so there are also people that are that. delighted about that. But you see, uh, it, it has uh, it's, it's a carrot and stick thing. There is definitely some people's job that has been shut down since October. Some people's loans are running while they are unable to make money since that October. So there are other people that are affected. Let's resolve the totality and mm -hmm. be able to move forward. Interesting. I'll come back to you, Aisha Yesufu, before I come back to the uh, lawyer in the studio. Aisha, there is, uh, like I said at the opening of this um, segment, there's a 13th of February um, protest, um, peaceful protest, I must add, that's going to be done because of the reopening of this tour. Is that the best um, approach, knowing what had happened on October 10, uh, October 20, uh, 2020? Is that the best approach, again, for us uh, as Nigerians to push Father, for justice to be done, or, or would you rather that there be another way to go about this? Well, the, the, the first thing that should have happened would have been that of what happened on the night of October 20, 2020, should never have happened. It is criminal, it is, was a massacre that happened, and the government should be made to be, to be held responsible. Coming out for a peaceful uh, protest is part of the Constitution. It's legal. It is allowed. So why are we looking at that, whether that's the best approach on, on the illegality that the government unleashed on the people of Nigeria? And we, we, must, be, we must always be careful not, not to be in a way where, where we, are, we are giving legitimacy to illegitimacy. I don't know if that makes sense. To an illegal happening, we're, we're sort of legitimizing it by saying, okay, let's have a different approach because of what happened on the 20th of October 2020. It shouldn't have happened. The government was criminal. The government behaved like a terrorist government and decided to kill its people. And that we must not, never, ever allow. And before NBC says anything, that is my opinion. If they have anybody to come and find, they should find Aisha Yusufu. It has nothing to do with Plus TV. Having said that, the best approach, of course, always as citizens, legitimate uh, as citizens who are going about things in a legal way, protest, peaceful protest is a manner of saying to the government, we do not like what you're doing, so do something about it. And so the people, it's, it, it, the people have a right to decide that they're going to come out on the 13th of, uh, of February at Lekki Toge and peacefully say that, no, this is not the time for you to take over. This, the uh, LCT has a lot of things that they, they haven't uh, they, they haven't provided and people feel like they under at that place people were killed. The Nigerian life must matter. Well people are talking about economy, we must not whip up emotional uh, uh, blackmail in, in, in a way. Lives are very important. For somebody who's, who is saying that, oh, right now we can't go because the, the, uh, the toll gate, uh, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not operating the way it should be. They're not making money. Guess what? If they were shot dead and they're in the mortuary, they also would not be making money. Nine, when 9-11 happened, the Twin Towers, it was, there was so much economic value attached to it. But there was a reason why they decided that they were not going to build on it. They're going to leave uh, a, a monument out there. We must begin to respect lives in this country. Okay. And finally, back to you. Um, with what you have witnessed, 
will justice definitely be served in this matter? Again, let's not forget, it's not a court of law. It is a panel that is sitting. And whatever these pan the, the members of the panel come up with at the end of the day is still subject to, um, you know, um, whatever the government of the day decides to, you know, take or act on. So where do we go from here? Very well. Um, at the inception of the panel, I did draw the attention of the, of the members of the panel to the fact that emotions and sentiments are attached largely to what is being done at the panel. And so um, some of us as lawyers were very careful because we knew that there were certain direction you would go that you would be misinterpreted. Um, however, that has come to play. What I was expecting um, members of the panel to do because there's a, problem, a confidence issue with the government in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The people do not trust the government. And there's no, there's no, there's no denial about that. What I was so expecting- bottom line, will justice, do you think justice will, will ever be served on this? Well, matter? well, it behoves- You as a person not speaking be, for the well, yeah, it behoves on the members of the panel. I have said it this time and time again. Their integrity is at stake. Okay. Their future is at stake. Okay. The question is, are they going to trade it on this platform? Are they going to, be continue, are they going to co rather continue to be men and women of integrity, like, like I know my Lord the chairman is, like I know my Leonard Senior Ebunade Borua is, okay. and every other member of that panel? All right, I want to thank all my guests for being part of the conversation. Bernard Niga is a team lead Nigerian Bar Association, Observation, and Pro Bono Committee on the NSAS uh, um, Lagos panel. Also, um, Aisha Yesufu is a social political activist, and Bolahon Olojede is an economic uh, economist. Thank you, gentlemen and lady, for joining us on this conversation. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. But before then, we went out to the streets to see how Nigerians are reacting to the reopening of the Lekki toll gate. The opening of the toll gate now is not necessary. Because for the past years, it has been causing a lot of traffic in, in the, over there. The passenger used to, we used to, we a lot of people complain of uh, what's how normally we normally pass through through in that area. So for me, for me personally, I don't, I don't think it's not it's a welcome development in in opening in reopening of the toll gates now. We don't like what is happening in that toll gate. We don't want you to work again. So we are still feeling the pain that we are passing through that toll gate. So let it be the way you are like that. To make an investigation for the people that lost their life first, let them confirm for those people that shoot those people to dead. Let us know the army so that if they want to reopen it, let us find out what happened first before they can do anything back. It should be open now. Why? Because there's a, because no business with that. So they have to... You have to continue upon it so that they begin to collect tax. The money we are spending there, we don't know where the money is going. Do you understand? They are collecting money there, and the road is bad and everything, traffic. Let them stop not collecting money there. We don't need it. We don't want anybody to collect any money there any longer. We don't want to open the toge. Let the, as let the toge should be like that. There is no more traffic in the, in the road. Once they open that toll there is so much traffic on the road. Here's my take. Now, whatever happened to appointments and assigning of political roles being a result of merits, hard work, and, and competence? Now, it seems to be some form of reward scheme for friends and favorites of the powers that be. Of course, it's the president's right, don't get me wrong, to appoint whoever he wants, but in doing so, all things have to be considered, right? Anyway, the memories of the October 20, 2020 um, is still fresh on our minds. And young unarmed Nigerians were attacked by armed soldiers. Some say it was a massacre. Some others say, uh, you know, they were shot at. Some say it was... Uh, you know, democratic rights that were impeded on or trampled on. But our rights died on that day. And yet, justice has not been done. It became a crime to protest and demand good governance. Is this how a democracy should work? Well, this is my take. Nigerians will never forget what happened on the 
20th of October 2020. I am Mariana Cole, thanking you for watching.